Fraternal orders were created in the Middle Ages as groups of craftsmen joined together and pledged to help each other and their families in time of need. This was long before life insurance and social security benefits. The largest unified fraternal order in the world today started in England almost 300 years ago. They are the Independent Order of Odd Fellows. It's commonly believed they're called Odd Fellows because it was considered strange for common people to go around doing good things for others. That concept, of course, is no longer considered odd. These men at that time were uh, suffering in the Industrial Revolution in England, and they would take care of widows and orphans of their deceased brothers. And someone commented, it's really odd that those fellows should do that. Hence, the name Odd Fellows. And over a period of time, the Odd Fellows evolved into a lodge, and they have a whole lodge structure with passwords and signs, etc. So from the time of just this early beginning, then you go from town to town. If you're an odd fellow, you had a password and a sign, you could go and you could get a little help, either a job or another basket of food to get you by for another week or so. The Independent Order of Odd Fellows is also known as the Three Link Fraternity. It uses the three links as its emblem, its friendship, love, and truth, as the basic principles of how you're supposed to live your life day to day. If you have friendship for one another, love for family and friends and the community, and you do it in a truthful manner. In 1819, Thomas Wilde, a spring maker and odd fellow who had emigrated from England, organized an odd fellowship lodge at the Seven Stars Tavern in Baltimore. Later, he recruited various lodges around the country to form a national association. In 1842, Wilde's group in the States broke off from the homeland adopting a distinctly American ceremony based upon the Bible. The Independent Order of Odd Fellows started with four objectives. Care for the sick, relieve the distressed, bury the dead, and educate the orphan. These four goals continue to be the Odd Fellows mission to this day. In 1852, the Canadian branch merged with the U.S. Order, and by 1861, the year Wilde died, there were over 200,000 members of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows in North America. As the order grew, members' wives and daughters played a more active role in carrying out the principles of Odd Fellowship. In 1861, what is known as the Rebecca Degree was established, allowing women to participate in lodge activities. In so doing, Odd Fellows became the first fraternal order to authorize a ladies' auxiliary. Later, Rebecca's became an independent organization within the Odd Fellow structure. By 1929, there were over 1.7 million Odd Fellows and Rebecca's spanning a wide range of social levels. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was an Odd Fellow. Larger cities, like New York and Chicago, had over 100 lodges each, distinguished by neighborhoods, religions, and nationalities. Almost every town had an Odd Fellow Lodge, and in many places, the Lodge was the town's grandest building. Odd Fellows were one of the first groups coming into the old towns, and in the process of building their Lodge Halls, it was probably one of the larger buildings in the community, so therefore it became the school, the church, the community center. For fraternal organizations, the Lodge is the heart and center it is where business is conducted. New members are inducted, where the bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood are strengthened. Odd Fellowship recognizes mankind as a part of one universal brotherhood and teaches you to cherish and protect your fellow man. It presents a broad platform upon which mankind may unite in human benefits. To this day, Odd Fellows and Rebecca's continue with the tradition of costumes, symbols, and degrees. In the Odd Fellow Lodge, we currently have four degrees. A mystery degree, which is an introduction, which reminds you of how you're supposed to live life. Then you progress into the first, second, third degrees. The first degree being the degree of tr friendship, and that's based on a story between Jonathan and David. The second degree is the degree of uh, love, and that's the story of the Good Samaritan and third degree is the degree of truth, and that deals with just being truthful with yourself and with uh, your fellow man.
The ceremonies are derived from biblical stories. The order has no religious affiliation. The only uh, prerequisite that we have is that they believe in the supreme being, that they believe in their supreme being. Doesn't necessarily have to be my supreme being. If we hear of someone who needs help, whether it is another Rebecca or someone else in the community, we'll do a dinner, we'll donate the money. If they need medicine or whatever, they can come to us and we'll do what we can to help them. We have two things that we feel excite everybody. One is the history and one is the mystery. And you can come in this lodge and look around and we'll point out all the history, but until you're an odd fellow, you don't find out what the mystery is all about. The camaraderie that's formed between the guys that are actually doing it on the front lines, the guys that are cooking for the breakfast, or the guys that are actually doing it, I mean, it, it just goes, it speaks volumes. It just, that's what created the, the, the friendship and the fraternity that has just developed into what it is now. When I met these people, I found out they're not out at all. They're just a real nice brotherhood of uh, benevolent people that, you know, work together and really do a lot to help unfortunate people. Since September 11th and the continued fears of terrorism, there has been a renewed interest in patriotism and community. In this confusing time, Perhaps the traditions of fraternal orders will reintroduce us to grassroots charity and the collective good that comes from joining friends and neighbors to help others in need. If so, would that be considered odd? We know some people who would happily agree it would.